Chef Shea Bear here. Today we're going to make homemade beef jerky. So stick around. It's easy to do. Let's get into it. Okay guys, so we're going to start off with our marinade. We're going to marinate these uh, our meat for a couple hours. So I'm going to start off with we use some of this marinade here. This is teriyaki. Uh, some people use soy sauce. My store actually didn't have any soy sauce, so I got this. Uh, teriyaki is a pretty popular flavor for um, beef jerky, so we're going to do three quarters cups of uh, three quarters cups of that, and we're going to use this Worcestershire sauce. Almost nailed it. So we're going to use three equal amounts. I mean, you can use a half a cup, but they're going to be about equal amounts. <coughs> and they don't have to be perfect. I'm just uh, giving you an idea here. I'm going to put that in there. Okay, so now we're going to add some of the some of our seasoning. Uh, I got some of the steak seasoning here, and I forgot to open it first. Uh, you can you can put whatever seasoning you want in here. Uh, like I said, this recipe doesn't call for uh, steak seasoning, but I'm gonna put a little bit in there. Uh, maybe a tablespoon. I do have a recipe over here I'm looking at. I haven't made this in years. Okay. So we're going to... Let me see here. Alright. Now, we're going to add a tablespoon of this paprika. Um, smoked paprika. It gives it a it gives it a subtle smoke flavor, but we're also going to add liquid smoke, so just kind of give this a helping tablespoon here, or a helping, a heaping. What is stuff? I don't know why they don't have a flip out thing like some of the other ones do. So that should be about a. a uh, heaping because you know some went inside there so, all right so we we'll use that now we're going to move on to our liquid smoke uh, they have different flavors of this this is what I used it was like three dollars um, this one is mesquite okay uh, they have apple they've got I believe cherry um, they had four flavors at, at my store. Now this stuff, guys, will not take a lot. So be careful when you use this. I'm only going, since we put the smoked paprika in, I'm just going to use a little bit of this. I'm only going to use a teaspoon. Usually, if I'm not using smoked paprika, great. These things never work either. Um... If I'm not using smoked paprika, then I'll go a teaspoon and a half, but it's up to you. It's how much of uh, the smoke flavor you want. But this stuff is pretty potent, so be careful. So we got our little teaspoon here. Like I said, I'm just going to put one teaspoon. Well, let's just go a <coughs> about a teaspoon and a quarter, maybe an eighth, okay? All right, now we've got our garlic powder. We're going to do, I think it's a tablespoon. I keep looking over here, guys. Sorry. Of the, uh, and you want powder. Okay, it's, it's a teaspoon. So, but you can add more if you want. Um, the recipe, this recipe particularly, calls for uh, onion powder. I don't have any. And... Really, whoops, sorry guys. I hit my mic. I don't really have any um, uh, uh, onion to me in, in this is okay. It's just not my favorite. So uh, let's do some 
Okay, calls for a teaspoon of pepper flakes. But it doesn't look like a lot. Okay, so let's go with This is just McCormick. It's whatever you can afford. Let's go with about that much, okay? You don't want a whole lot. I mean, you can if you want. If you like it. And then, you know, our crushed black pepper. I'm going to put about a teaspoon of this in. Uh, some people will put honey in it. Which is totally fine. That should be about right. Um, I have made it with honey before, but it's it's fine. It tastes okay. I just, to me, meat shouldn't be sweet. But uh, in jerky, it tastes fine. It's all right with me. But okay, so what we're gonna do might get a little messy here in a minute. Let's move this stuff here out of the way. I think we've got everything. Right. Uh, you can also add. Other stuff, seasoned salt, lemon pepper. I'm kind of running a little low on lemon pepper, so I'm just going to hold off on that. All right, and we're going to set this aside for now. Now we're going to get our meat, and I'll show you how we're going to cut that up. All right. Um, like this recipe will do two pounds. I think I only got a pound. Uh, but I'll show you what I got. Hang tight. Okay, so what I got here is I got the boneless sirloin steak. It's Angus beef. Um, got this. Where did we get this? Publix, I think. Yeah, Publix. Uh, it was twelve thirty-seven. It's it's about a pound and three quarter. Monkey's messaging me. Now I put this in the freezer for about forty-five minutes, so it's going to be easier to for me to cut okay now if you got a good butcher like I said I need to find me one they'll you know they'll cut you up some thin slices or whatever you want <coughs> now this next part's debatable and I mean that because everybody debates on it which is fine um, about the fat I'm going to trim the fat off um, you can leave it on if you're going to eat this stuff up pretty quick, but the fat will not. I left a little meat on here for Bruno. The fat doesn't last very long. It'll turn on you. Now I'm just going to cut this piece out. We'll cut that up separately. All right, you can leave a little bit of marbling and stuff like that, but like this much fat, if you're going to leave it, leave it on you want to eat it pretty quick you're not going to be able to put it in a container and leave it on the counter for a couple weeks because it will turn on you okay all right now you can do you can cut this um different ways you can go with the grain or against the grain if you go with the grain you get that more of a tug like that if you go against the grain it's a little more uh should i say tender now i'm going to cut these Oh, and about eight inch, eighth of an inch slices. Just about like that. You know, thicker than my blade. Now you can make it thinner if you want. So there's a big, big piece of fat on there. Um, yeah, you can go thinner if you want, or thicker. But the thicker you go, the longer it's going to take to dehydrate. And the thinner you go, the less time. That's all. And it's a matter of preference. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cut this up so I don't bore you guys. I'll cut that one up too. I'll fry that stuff up for Bruno. And I'll get back with you guys here in just a second. Okay. So this should make some nice, nice slices here. Okay. I'll be back with you guys. Okay. Now we're going to marinate these. A lot of guys will tell you dip them in one by one. I've never had to do that, never had any issues, because I'm going to put these in a baggie. You can leave them in here, mix them up and leave them in here if you want, just put something over top of this, it's fine. 
<coughs> but I'm going to put mine in a baggie. Hopefully I don't spill it all over the countertop. But. This is a gallon Ziploc bag. Now, another debate. How long do you leave this? Well, I'll tell you something. I've never done the experiment, but I used to when I'd make this. I didn't make it a lot, but I made it a few times a year. I used to put mine in for... Um, used to let it marinate overnight, you know, 10, 12, 14 hours. Uh, but my buddy would make his... And his was always packed full of flavor. And uh, I asked him how long he marinated his for. He said about an hour. And I'm telling you what, I couldn't tell the difference in his hour and my 10 to 12 hours. I, and that's no joke. Um, we experimented one time with, uh, with those vacuum seal, you know, that sucks all the air out and... And we done one and made it right away and we did another pound and we left it set for a couple hours. I can tell a difference. There was just much flavor in all of it. So, I mean, you know, if you want to make it the night before, okay, you got time to do this, but you don't have time to you know, make it the next day. By all means, it's not going to hurt it. Uh, I've seen, I've heard of people leaving in 30 30 hours, 48 hours, which, you know, 48 hours, two days. Um, like I said, I did leave mine in. It was probably close to 30 hours one time because I put it in the fridge and I went camping. Well, I went fishing, ended up staying the night. So it ended up being a couple days. I couldn't tell a difference. Uh, it had just as much flavor as, you know, my buddies that he would do for an hour. So I'm going to leave, I'm going to take this, I'm going to set it in a refrigerator for an hour maybe two hours just all depends we'll see and uh we'll let them marinate i'm going to clean this clean my stuff up here uh and uh i'll be back with you and we'll stick it in the oven okay okay guys our meat has been marinating for almost three hours so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put this back in this bowl just because it's easier to get out Bruno had his lunch. I cooked up that fat for him. Okay. Now, we're just going to take these out. I'm going to lay them on here because we're going to pat these dry. Okay. So, whoops. Mama will kill me. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> okay. Now, all right. Make sure these are on here. There's a couple long ones and a few shorter ones from that little piece we had, like that there. I'm just going to keep laying these out here so we can get them patted dry. I'll just speed you up. Okay, so now I'm going to pat these dry. I still have a couple more pieces over here that I still have to uh, to, to uh, get out and do. But I'm just going to pat these down. You can wear gloves if you want. You want to get that excess off of there. Because trust me, it's going to have plenty of flavor to this. Let me get another 
piece here. Just kind of, that's all you do, just pat them dry. I'm sure you guys have seen a lot of videos on how to do this. Uh, a couple years ago, the King of Random, they did it in a very hot car. And apparently it turned out okay. I, I, I mean it looked good. I, of course, I didn't get to taste it, but uh, yeah, it looked pretty good. Now the long you can if you if you cut them in long strips, you can hang them directly off of your uh, your oven rack. But since these are not uh, all that long, I'm just going to lay them out on a baking sheet with a cooling rack on top of the cooling rack in a baking sheet okay so I'm gonna move these <clears throat> like I said I got a couple more here I'm gonna have to take care of but I'm gonna move these over here out of the way and I've got my baking sheet and cooling rack here now, uh, I got that for in case I don't have enough room on here, which it doesn't look like I'm going to have. Now these, I can just you can just use your fingers if you want. I'm just going to lay on here, just like this, so that way it gets some air up in there. I have my oven preheated to 170 degrees. Now I I usually like to make them at about uh, at about uh, 160 but my oven only goes down to 170 so what we're going to do is we're going to put these in the oven at about 100 at, a, at exactly 170 degrees we're going to check them in three hours but let me go ahead and get these laid out and I'll show you uh, what they look like okay guys so now we're going to put these in the in the oven that's what they look like um, the sides can touch because they'll shrink up and pull away from each other, but you don't want them on <coughs> Excuse me on top of each other. You don't want them overlapping like you don't want it Like that Just going to kind of want it like that. I know that's what everybody says, but it is important uh, Okay, got a little piece over here. Let's put this in here. Now this is what I got left over over here that many Got a couple small tiny pieces that broke off. I'm just going to set them here. Um, I've seen some guys on YouTube, they actually put it on parchment paper. I've never tried that. I'm sure it would work. But we got the uh, temperature up here at 170 degrees. And we'll set it for three hours, which would be, what, 180 minutes. So, and we're going to check it if it needs the fourth hour, another 20 minutes, another 30 minutes, whatever, we'll do it then. But so let's go with 180 minutes. Start. Uh, that ain't right. That's coming up with two hours and 20 minutes. Oops. I shut the whole thing off. All right. Uh, drop down. 55 degrees because you lose 15 to 20 degrees every time you open an oven door um, Okay, so I want to set this let's see 120 is two hours Yeah, I'm counting so it'd be 180 minutes go to 180 That's an hour 80 that's two hours and 20 minutes. Let's go. It, it's, it might not let me do it. Let's go with 200. That's two hours. Let's go with, all right, let's go this way. You can set it by the hour. Okay, there we go. All right, there's three hours. I could have sworn I tried to set that one time for two hours and it didn't. Uh, wouldn't let me but okay I'm gonna see you guys in a couple hours well for you guys it'll be a second but we're gonna check it in three hours and we'll see how it's doing um, this leftover sauce here 
if you have leftover like this, you can put this in a baggie and freeze it and thaw it out for next time. Which I'm not going to do because I don't have that much left over. So, but yeah, you can do that if you want. Now, I'm going to clean up some stuff over here. Wash my cutting boards down. I'll see you in a few hours. Okay, guys. It's been three hours. Oh, let's see. Let's give these a look. Oh, look at that. Ah, they look pretty good. I think they need to be a little bit more though. Let's check the ones on the bottom. Yeah, let's give them. I'm gonna try one. Oh my god. <laughs> Couldn't help it. Let's give them another 30 minutes to an hour. I'll bring them out. I'll bring you back with me when they're done and we'll try them out. Okay, guys, we're going to take this out of the oven now. It's been about four hours and ten minutes. There's those ones. Set these up here. them ones. These are great for hikers, hunters. I used to make these and take them hunting, share with my friends and we'd sit out in the woods and munch on these. Uh, like I said, hiking, camping, fishing, you want a snack, there you go. So I'm gonna go see if monkeys ready to come out and try one. We'll see what they taste like. Um, I guess about four hours and ten minutes. I think they're alright. I probably could have squeeze some more juice out of them but uh, I think they'll be all right so let's get monkey out here when she gets off the phone and we'll see what she thinks of them that means you can go <laughs> Okay. Not... Monkey's here now, so. <laughs> yep, I'm here now. She's gonna give it a shot and see what she thinks of them. Okay. A little piece or a big piece? Whichever one you want. I do a medium piece. So, how long do you have to let them cool? Or does it matter? They're, I mean, they're only, they're just dehydrated at 107 anyway, so they cool pretty quick. Mm. Oh, they're good. Yeah? Yeah. Are they as good as Jack's Links or whatever? Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Are they? For mm. real? Yeah. Got a nice tender chewy thing to them. Yeah. Yeah, they're good. They're not real. Well, I cut against the grain, mm. too. That makes a difference. If you cut with it, that's where you get that, where you got to yank it. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, so I cut against the grain so it's a little bit more tender yeah juicy yeah mm -hmm. i like it yep Very okay good. all right well i'll let you get mm -hmm. back to your your work and mm -hmm. i'll do my outro so she's waiting on a phone call from a patient so yep all right there you go thanks monk you're welcome bye okay guys so there you go uh monkey just tried it she liked it i'm gonna try one Mm. very flavorful well, like I said earlier as far as marinating goes you can marinate it as long as you want but <coughs> a piece of red pepper but I've tasted it when it was only marinated for an hour I've tasted it when it was marinated for a couple of days um, I can't tell a difference in the flavor now, my buddy, whenever the subject would come up, a lot of people would ask him how he makes it and how long they should marinate it. 
and everybody says, oh, you got to marinate it overnight. It's got to be tw at least 12 hours. And But he said, well, when you're talking about a piece of meat this thin, maybe a pork chop, yeah, maybe a chicken breast, sure, because it's so thick, it'll take longer. But he said, when you're talking about a piece of meat this thin, he said, think about it. He said, take a t-shirt, dunk it in water for 10 seconds, pull it out and weigh it. Then take another t-shirt, same exact size, dunk it in water for 10 minutes, pull it out and weigh it. They're going to weigh about the same, he said, because you can only get something saturated so much. Which is true. You can only get a t-shirt so wet. Well, this, you can only get it saturated so long, so... You know, leaving it in there is not going to, you know, once it's penetrated clear through, it, it's penetrated. And he said he finds within an hour, it's usually penetrated enough. And like I said, I, I've tasted both ways um, several, several hours and his that was just an hour. And like I said, I couldn't tell a difference. Um, you know, I mean, as far as, you know, that goes as far as. You know, letting them marinate longer, I couldn't tell the difference from an hour, which was his, and 12 hours, which was mine. Because we used the same recipe, pretty much what you saw saw me do here today. Um, so they pretty much tasted about the same, other than the seasoning aspect. You know, we didn't measure out, we just, ch -ch 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 -ch. you know, his, ch -ch -ch, and my ch -ch -ch might be a little different. But as far as, um, you know, flavor for... It, it was clear through it was clear through so anyway guys there you go easy i won't say quick um but it is easy it's kind of quick to you know and if you can get your butcher <coughs> excuse me to slice these up for you real thin that's even quicker but i mean once once you slice them up throw them in the fridge let them marinate for an hour to however long you want uh and then, like I said, this was 170, and it was about 4 hours and 10 minutes. Just make sure you damp them off real good before you put them in there. I probably could have damped mine a little bit more, but these will be gone by tomorrow, probably. So, <laughs> sorry guys. Anyway, I'm Chef Shea Bear. As you guys know, I'm not really a chef, but I like cooking. I really enjoy cooking in the new kitchen. So, that being said... Hope everyone has a great weekend coming up, and we'll see y'all in the next one. So, stay tuned. I've been challenged <laughs> to a friendly competition. It's going to be a lot of fun. This guy's really cool. So, when we get some more details about that worked out, I'll let you guys know, and I'll give you a link to his channel so you can go check him out, watch his videos. So, anyway... I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye and take care, guys. Thanks for watching.